Hello, I'm Mike Neil of Dice, this is the Kimmel Space Program. Scenarios, I think I, was, I think there's like one or only one or two left to go. Like, do I want to do the Dino Wing re-entry? Not really. Um, there's a refueling one, which is going to be a big docking thing. That's probably going to be really annoying. I don't even know what this one, this is dual error break. Join the crew of the inspiration of the Windward Spirits as they error break in the dual system. Don't forget to retract the solar panel. Oops, hang on. No, no, I'm pressing silly buttons. Pressing buttons that don't help me. There we go. Hit cancel, not start. Why do I hit cancel, not start? That is just silly. I don't know what this is going to entail. I presume I'm just going to be pointing at Jewel, which is that thing. Um, on a... An air breaking. So what I'm wanting to do, I guess... Um, lots of rule, lots of heat shields. Uh, what I'm wanting to do, I presume, is to um, get myself in some kind of capture orbit. Now, what I'm going to go, I'm going to start just retracting things like this antenna. I'm hoping that things um, I've never ever braked in dual before so I don't really know what's going to happen so there we go we have some liquid fuel left but no oxidizer I presume we're using nukes if we're using anything at all yeah there's a, there's a nuke And there is a lander can, which is just on its own there. It's a bit weird. It, it doesn't have any... Um, anything, really. Use a retractor, that's fine. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's just this lander can that is sitting there. Um, not doing anything. doesn't have any... It's got... <coughs> Docking ports on either side, but other than that, it doesn't actually do anything, which is kind of interesting. I'm just wondering what that's for. It might be something that it, it's actually for the end of the. Um, that's a monocrop. Uh, it's actually for like when you when you finally get back home, you can just kind of pack one person off in the lander can and uh, off your head. Now, let's look at Jewel for a second. Intimations. What do I want? I want information about Jewel. I want atmosphere. He has in two hundred thousand meters. That's what I wanted to know. So that is one hundred sixty-four thousand meters. So let's walk to about there. Oh, and let's make sure we are pointing a retrograde. Let's put on our RCS so we can turn really quickly. Or do we want to be pointing prograde? Do we want to be pointing prograde? Because actually, I believe all the... Um, heat shieldy stuff is on the front it looks like I just assumed retrograde because that's the way almost always is the way you point when you are coming back home from um, the man or something you put your, your your heat shield kind of underneath so you can't come in backward but I'm suddenly realizing that's not what is going to be done here Uh, we're beginning to actually get into the atmosphere. In fact, we're, we're just about to hit it, and so we're, we're having trouble getting uh, uh, 
getting ourselves aligned properly. Now I'm desperately hoping. <clears throat> this is going to see. Let's, let's, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of things that could happen in this thing. Um, let's start pinning these. And let's not hit the jettison heat shield button because that will make you sad. I keep wanting to hit that button. It's a big blue shiny button that's basically begging to be pressed. So we are now, as far as I understand it, <coughs> in the atmosphere. No, we're not. Okay. Well, maybe we are, but. Uh, well, certainly we could time warp a bit faster, it looks like. Oh, well, maybe we're not actually in the episode at all, now I think about it. We are not in... Uh... Yeah, I'm a whole order of magnitude off. What am I, what am I babbling about? So, I'm going to warpy, warpy, warp, warp. But I don't actually want to walk too far ahead because that gives the uh, because you don't rotate while you're time warping. Okay, so we're so you can see I'm gradually going out of, of heading away from prograde, which is potentially very bad. Because I want to be hitting, you know, dead on. We have the sun behind us. That's probably not very useful. Uh, in terms of being able to see what's going on, anyway. We'll go a little bit further, a little bit faster. So we've got, we've got Billy Bobman Kerman, Rodford Kerman, and Stellalia Kerman. So we are now under 30, 300,000 kilometers. Uh, we're now under 250,000 kilometers. And we will untime warp, uh, let's say now. So we're untime warped. And we're going to be hitting the atmosphere very soon. And we'll see what is going to happen. Um, a lot of living accommodation. The cargo, I don't know what's in the cargo. Is that? That said it was open. Oh no, that's a button to open it. That's not what I want to do. So we are now in the atmosphere. Uh, not a whole heap, but we are, we are a bit in the atmosphere. And oh, fiery fire. And things are going to burn away right away. Wow, we're going to lose so many bits. Heat shields! Not really doing their job, I don't think. I'm trying to work out if these are bits that I could have gotten rid of. Yeah, you can see um, this could not go up. Yeah, there's the docking ports. Do I need. Uh, if I put out the radiators, they're just going to get thrown off, I'm sure. Heat shields are heating up, which is admittedly what they're meant to do. I'm going to have a brief look at what's happening to our orbit. And the answer is, I don't know what's happening to our orbit. All right, we're, we're currently in an escape orbit. Heat shield is still allowing bits to heat up a lot. Um, I'm just going to assume that uh, 
unleashing the radiators will kill me. But at the same time, I suspect I'm about to lose bits of me. Yeah. That's the temperature overlay, F11. Not quite getting to explodey times, but certainly thinking about it. Meanwhile, our uh, escape has only gone up by about uh, a couple of days. To, so we're getting quite close to our Perry, 51 seconds away from our Perry Absolute. Haven't actually exploded yet, which is good. Um, I certainly can't do anything like try and change my um, Velocity. I can only go forwards. I can't go backwards. I mean, you know, in theory, if I wanted to do a capture, um, I'd need to be pointing retrograde. But then I wouldn't have all of my lovely heat shields, and I would just explode immediately. All right, we're still going down. This mission has been going for two years and 141 days, apparently. These bits have been um, like on the highest temperature setting for quite some time now, but they haven't actually exploded. So, hopefully, something somewhere is doing its job. We're still 40 seconds away, so I think we're running quite slowly. Yeah, one, no, yeah. Don't really need that up. Everything is on fire, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure there are a few bits I can lose, like if that docking port exploded, I'm not too sure how sad I'd be. Um, but I think those things, because those hold the uh, RCS control actual kind of vents, I suspect I would be quite sad when we have those. Still going down, I think we're still going down. Still heading down very rapidly. No idea how long it's actually gonna take. I mean it was it was 30 seconds last time I checked, but I'm not terribly sure I should uh, be taking the time to check. Uh, I should probably be in this view and see what happens. Still going down, still going down, still going down. I'm going to nip into map view and see what's going on. Oh, no, that's the thing. Okay, our, our escape trajectory is uh, changing. Oh, looks like we might be getting a capture. It's, it's swinging around. Uh, it is allegedly 13 seconds to our periapsis. I believe, yes, we are now captured. We are going to be in the dual system. And still seven seconds, five, four. So we're going to start going up fairly soon. And yeah, we're still going down. But I think that that's kind of not quite as jammed against down as fast as, as this, this <laughs> indicator can indicate. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Now we're going back up again. So we've passed through 
we're now halfway through. Um, the ex things that I thought were going to explode haven't exploded. And I'm going to say that's a good thing. Maybe that's premature. We've still got quite a lot of ablator, abl ablator, ablator. Um, They get no signs for it, but there you go. Crew report from Jules Upper Atmosphere. That would be a, that would be a neat thing. If it weren't for the fact that absolutely no one cares about the crew, uh, science, and this is because this isn't a, a career game. So, so we're now heading back up at uh, over 100 meters a second due up, which is quite cool. So I believe we have survived this. Uh, the one thing we don't want is for the um, uh, we want this still to be in orbit by the time we've come out the other end and I'm I don't know what's going to happen to be perfectly honest because we are slowing down obviously and that's coming quite rapidly but um, it is going to come it's going to it's, that that periapsis, that apoapsis is going to come in quite rapidly to start off with, and then it'll slow as we get in in further and further. So there's not really a lot to do on this particular uh, scenario. It's largely um, point yourself the right direction and tuck in all the bits, tuck in your solar panels. and uh, hope for the best. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get back out of the atmosphere again. We're still only at uh, 167,000 metres uh, out of 200,000. So that's going to take us a while, I presume. Uh, I get the feeling that trying to fast forward during this would be a terrible, terrible, terrible plan. And only bad things could happen if I tried that. Nice amount of fuel, though. So you do. I do wonder if a craft like this, once it's got itself a dual orbit. Yeah, you see, that's that's coming quite slowly. Would they be able to, once they're round dual, would they then be able to get to lay? Val, Tylo, and so forth. I do like the design um, with all the various heat shields where they are and stuff. I don't know if, well, I mean, yeah, obviously, if you're going to. One of the issues with heat shields is you obviously need to have everything behind it, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, which means, what do you do if you've got something that won't fit behind a single three and a half meter heat shield? And the answer is you put heat shields on other things. So presumably, if we make the assumption that we're not going to be doing this another error breaker, now that one's taking that one's clearly taking the brunt. That's what, yeah, that's, that's definitely taken over 50%. Whereas these others haven't, and I presume it's because partially they're being shielded. Where they light up and, and their shadow vanishes is kind of cool. So it looks like we've survived. Uh, I can only assume the people who put this scenario together uh, made it make sense so that the, it would, in fact, Succeed properly. Uh, you don't need a huge amount of uh, um, you, there's not a huge amount of user input required for this, I don't think. That's the thermal uh, overlay again. 
everything's quite hot. Uh, this, I would obviously quite like to have the Kerbal Engineer Redux uh, readouts for this, telling me how very hot I am and how close I'm to exploding. Uh, about to click into 180,000 kilometres. And we're now going up very fast indeed. So we are leaving Jewel behind us. Hopefully, well, we, we are going to be sticking with Jewel, but we are. It looks like we're going to have quite the eccentric orbit, but that's fine. Uh, you, you don't really want something. Um, you don't really want, you want anything to, um, you know. well, it certainly it's going to have to be quite eccentric because this is still within the atmosphere, which you don't want. When you're out here, you're going to want to immediately change it to something that's not in the atmosphere. Uh, <coughs> I think, I think I'm hearing the sound change. So we may well be passing out of thermal shock in just a little time there. I think everything is indeed calming down. And nothing exploded. Somewhat to my surprise, nothing has exploded. And we're over 190,000 kilometers, so I think we're doing pretty well. Let's have a look at the thermal. It's still very hot, I suppose. Uh, that's uh, not that surprising, I don't think. But we have gone through, and uh, we have basically survived. I'm not going to chuck anything off just yet, uh, just in case. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get this ready. And get this ready. Are they, uh, so we're now out of the atmosphere, so I should be able to extend them. Some of I can't. There we go. Let's have a look at the thermal again. Oh, well, doesn't really tell us much of what's going on. I'm not quite sure where I want to angle the craft to do some cooling. But that's us survived. Um, I need to find the solar panels. I've forgotten where they are. And also I can't see because we're, we're now behind the planet. There we go. Get rid of these. And in fact, I can now um, jettison these. I think if I was going for maximum... Uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot! <laughs> I just, I just jettisoned it right into the solar panel. I don't think even engineers can fix solar panels. At least I don't think so. Uh, what can they fix? What can engineers fix? They can fix wheels and they can fix parachutes. Um, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming that some of my uh, folks are, I've got, yeah, so Billy Bob is an engineer. I don't know if he, I don't know if he can fix a solar panel. I'm looking up as we speak. But I think largely, um, I feel good about myself. Um, parachute, lander legs, wheels. So there's no point, he can't, he can't fix the solar panels. So we've lost the solar panel due to my idiocy. Uh, we've now lost the, uh, well, we're not lost, we've deliberately gotten rid of the uh, heat shields. What I should have done, to be perfectly honest, was um, turned around and sh and shoved them backwards so that they have they will more likely end up um, falling back into Kerbin.
but uh, not Cohen into Jules' atmosphere. But that's all right. Who cares about that? We have survived. It's been successful. So thanks so much for watching. Um, we of the spacecraft. I don't know what this is called. Inspiration of the Windward. Wow. Uh, we have the good ship Inspiration of the Windward. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, do hope you've enjoyed this. Come visit Neil Dice at neilofdice.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. You can find links to those in the uh, show notes and in the uh, links uh, below this video. And until next time, reach for the stars.